Welcome tonight to the Kern Council of Government's Public Workshop, Thursday, November 17th, 2016 at 6 p.m. in the Kern Cog Boardroom. This evening we have an educational presentation on the importance of mixed-use development presented by Mr. Austin Smith, the owner and broker of Sage Equities, Robert E. Smith, president of Smith Tech USA, and Daniel Carter, Daniel Carter principal architect of Cater, Cater Design Group. Um, and please begin. Thank you, sir. Great. Thank you all for inviting us. Uh, when Rob reached out to me a month or so ago and, and asked if we could come present, I, I saw it as a really great opportunity. Uh, we're lucky enough to have a project we're developing in downtown Bakersfield, the first uh, market rate housing downtown that we're very excited about. So we really appreciate the opportunity to come here and, and share with you a little bit about us. Uh, as mentioned, I, uh, I'm a commercial real estate broker uh, and I also uh, am engaged in real estate development. Background, I uh, worked for the U.S. General Services Administration for six years and did construction project management as well as uh, tenant representation leasing. Um, also have a background in urban planning, uh, master's from San Jose State University. I uh, just moved back to Bakersfield two and a half years ago and uh, it's been a wonderful experience so far to be back home and uh, appreciate all the opportunities that are here. Great, and then uh, I'm Daniel Cater. Thank you for letting me uh, come today and share in the presentation. Uh, I am founder and uh, lead principal at Cater Design Group, a new architecture firm uh, in Bakersfield. Uh, like Austin, I'm fairly recent returned. I, I came back in May, so, um, but I've been collaborating uh, with the Smiths and a few others locally on some exciting projects downtown. And I am Bob Smith, your colleague on the board and a city council member for Bakersfield, and I also am a civil engineer, planner, land developer, and I am involved in the uh, downtown Bakersfield project also. Great. So we'll jump right into our project. <coughs> this was a site uh, that w is currently under development before we purchased it. It's bounded by 17th Street to the south, 18th Street to the north, into the west and O Street to the east. And basically it's, it's three quarters of a city block. The area that you see, everything basically everything unpaved uh, other than the, the small uh, data center building in the northwest corner is all uh, under development right now. What was on the site were five uh, kind of dilapidated uh, 1950s uh, structures, uh, single family uh, homes that were uh, a lot of, you know, there were vagrants living in them in and out and, and uh, that sort of thing. So we basically saw this as a big opportunity. It was, it was put on the market as, as one assembled piece of property and we saw this as a good potential for infill development. Uh, we'd like to think that we, we took one of the worst blocks downtown and are in the process of turning it into the best. And so a little uh, description of what is there now and what will be there in the... the will be open in the near future. Um, three quarters of a block have become 44 uh, upscale townhomes that are uh, market rate. So bringing uh, young professional, uh, small young families, baby boomer retirees looking to uh, urbanize and downsize, um, an opportunity to come downtown and uh, live in the heart of the city. And so if you look at the site plan on the left, the organization of the site, uh, the buildings are oriented east-west and um, comprised of six buildings and then parking is all contained within the structure so there's no surface parking and in the middle of the block there is a full-length amenity space for the residents that is comprised of different outdoor barbecue areas kind of seating areas fire pits a chance for uh, residents to uh, walk their dogs to uh, get to know their neighbors and kind of bring a new a new product to downtown Bakersfield. So lessons learned uh, specific to this project, and <coughs> I was told that you know there's representatives here from all the cities of Kern County, so I uh, wanted to have a disclaimer and say these are what we've learned in the process of, of developing in, in Bakersfield, and that they might not necessarily hold true to your community, but we think that there are some, some general uh, issues that any sort of uh, urban infill project would face. Uh, first one is, is zoning. Luckily, in the particular part of downtown that we're in, we have very favorable zoning that allows for a, 
a great number of uses. So we didn't have to work through any sort of zone change. We did have a site plan review process and the city uh, was relatively uh, easy to work with uh, working through that process. Uh, another way we were lucky was that the land was all assembled and a, a lot of infill developments, a block like that, you could have eight different property owners that you're trying to put all together. So that can be a big barrier. Uh, and it, it will be for, for future projects. Uh, but on, on this one, we were able to move it quickly forward because it was all one piece of property. Uh, building codes are, are always something to work through as well. And some cities are more progressive and, and some are less, uh, typically based on how many of these urban projects they've had to deal with. Uh, we had some minor issues that, that we worked through, uh, but nothing, nothing major because this product type of three-story townhomes isn't anything that is that outside the norm for Bakersfield. It's, it's wood frame construction. Uh, as you get into more adaptive reuse of historic buildings or uh, taller uh, you know, glass and steel or, or podium construction, it gets more complicated and that's something that's, there, there would be more changes needed to the local codes in this market. Uh, security was a big concern. Uh, for our project because people there is a certain fear about downtown that has started to change over the years as there's more businesses and more people walking around uh, but we did uh, we do provide gated entry into the into the project and then garage doors into the units so uh, as well as cameras and lighting and eyes on the street as I uh, always like to see in, in planning uh, so that was a, a big a big focus and concern as well. Uh, to the right, you can see the, the floor plan on the screen and you get a sense of, you drive in the garage and then walk upstairs to the second floor and it's living, dining, kitchen area and a half bath and then up one more flight of stairs and there's two bedrooms and a bathroom. So that kind of gives you a, a sense of how the project fits together. Uh, infrastructure is always a challenge as well. Uh, we had to underground a power pole it, which was a big cost, and it had not only PG&E lines on it, but it had uh, telecom lines and, and data uh, and cable lines as well. So that that's always a cost, and I'll speak to that later in, in terms of what cities can do to help promote infill development. Impact fees are always a, a challenge also, and uh, m personally my opinion is that impact fees should be waived for infill projects in order to incentivize uh, developers to come downtown because it's it's a lot more brain damage to build something infill than it is to go buy farmland and and anything cities can do to better encourage uh, infill development I, I would encourage all of you if you could revisit your your impact fees um, that's something that you could definitely do to incentivize developers uh, equity financing is always a hurdle too uh, when you're doing something new is is like any sort of business, that finding the money is the hard part, but uh, especially for something that hasn't been tried before, it's challenging. And then also uh, bank financing as well. Uh, not necessarily something that applies to what all of you do, but it's good to be aware that uh, those are the issues that developers face as they're trying to do projects like this. So next we have the uh, sort of the amenities around our, our site, and I'll let Bob speak to that. Well, the, the title is Mixed Use, and, and this is not specifically a mixed use, but uh, we're also working on a coffee shop that's uh, half a block away. Uh, it shows on the right there, and, and the map shows what is walkable to the site. Uh, restaurants, uh, the Robble Bank Arena, Mill Creek, uh, parks, uh, big job centers downtown. I think we added up one time uh, 50 some restaurants within a 10 minute walk. Uh, the Maya Cinema is about a 10 minute walk. So all types of opportunities are within walking distance to this site. And just the, uh, the larger issues, uh, as government, as council members and mayors, we can help ordinances, like was mentioned, the impact fees. We, we all try to do what we can for our downtowns, but it, it takes a culture. It just, it's just not about ordinances. It's about a community effort. Um, examples were 
in in Cincinnati, large employers. Uh, Procter and Gamble was a very large employer there, and and they formed a nonprofit and and bought up downtown lands and helped develop it. Um, Fresno, Asimi Granville Homes has built 300 and some units downtown. Uh, a local tech firm startup Bitwise is building 50 or just finished 50,000 square feet downtown and, and it's helping Fresno and then uh, Oklahoma City the community voted to uh, tax itself and, and the invest that taxes in downtown and then uh, Los Angeles uh, the example there is they they really address their codes to uh, make it easier for development and They've seen a great revitalization downtown. So it takes a culture and a community. My point is, is that government can do so much, but government is just one part of the community, and, and the community has to come together. And this project, we were lucky enough to find enough community members to come together to provide the equity to make the project happen. And so we want, we hope to continue doing that to find people and and the, that the culture changes enough so that people are. Uh, the community of Bakersfield and your communities are invested in the downtown areas. So what we see is the, the next steps of what needs to happen to continue the downtown Bakersfield revitalization as a business improvement district is, is an important uh, next step. And uh, our recently elected uh, downtown council member that represents the Ward 2 area has stated that that's going to be his top priority. A business improvement district, for those of you that, that don't know, basically provides additional tax revenue to a nonprofit organization that provides a higher level of service for a downtown area, including policing and lighting and signage and marketing and all the things that, that really bring people downtown and make it a so safe, welcoming environment. Uh, also, I would recommend setting uh, impact fees, parking, lighting, signage, infrastructure, design guidelines, all those uh, regulatory issues that, that help incentivize uh, downtown development if you sort of create the frame within which developers can, can build. Uh, land assembly, as I said, is, is always a difficult issue with uh, infill developments because it's, it's much easier to buy 40 acres on the periphery uh, than it is to uh, work with multiple quarter acre landowners and, and put together uh, an, an acre or two to do something. Uh, and then prioritize infill infrastructure projects. As I said, undergrounding power lines and upgrading sewer systems. And there's a whole number of uh, infrastructure needs in an infill environment that come into play. And anything a city can do, uh, for PG&E, for example, I know they have programs where they they underground power lines in, in urban areas. So if, if the priority was to focus on, uh, on that, uh, you could sort of create that framework by which developers could come in and uh, do more development in our urban areas. So that's about all we had. Happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you very much. Anyone have any questions? I really do appreciate your presentation. Sure. Um, uh, Mr. Smith, mm -hmm. Councilman Smith, and um, Mr. Cater, appreciate right. your, that's very interesting. I just, yeah. when I'm going through this, I'm looking, how would that work in my community? Sure. Because I'm in a rural community. Right. And we right. also have the same challenges sure. with having to collect multiple parcels to do any projects right. like this. Right. And we don't have a real downtown, mm -hmm. per se. Yeah. So, but there are opportunities. Sure. So thank you very much for your time. Right. Thank you. And I took thank notes you. on the impact fees. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, so at this time, we'll um, just uh, recess until 6.30. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Kern Council of Government's Transportation Policy Planning Policy Committee meeting tonight, this Thursday, November 17th, 2016. Uh, before we begin, I would like to say that the Kern Council of Governments wants to express our deepest sympathy to Kathy Prout for the loss of her husband, Bill. Uh, we've enjoyed our time with Bill and you over many different events over several years now, and uh, we're going to miss him. 
So at this moment, I'd like to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance in respect and remembrance of Bill Prout. Thank you very much. Roll call. Torres. Here. Bob Smith. I'm here. Wood. Here. Pasquale. Here. Wilkie. Here. here. Cantu. Mauer. Here. Prout. Yes. Pryor. Here. Bill Smith. Here. Wigman. Here. Pouch. Here. Scribner. Here. Marquez. Here. Tara and Kiernan. Thank you very much. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may briefly respond to statements uh, made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. <coughs> Speakers are limited to two minutes with the authority of the chair to extend the time limit as deemed appropriate for conducting the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Do we have any public comments? Good evening. Dixie Walters, Kern County Sheriff's Office. Uh, my work address is 17635 <laughs> <laughs> Industrial Farm Road, Lairdo. <laughs> so I just have a few little tidbits about the work crew. Um, we have had about 294 hours since the start of this new contract. At 294 hours, of detention deputy hours, man hours, and multiply that by five inmates, which are on the crew, so about 1,470 man hours of labor since the start of the contract. About 93 miles of Kern highways have been beautified. Um, some target areas that we've hit, um, Bakersfield, obviously, Button Willow, Delano, Fraser Park, McFarland, Shafter, and Wasco. So that's about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate that. Anyone Thank have you. any questions? Thank you. Thank Anyone you. else have any public comments? Seeing none, let's move to the consent calendar. Uh, all items on the consent calendar are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kern <laughs> Council of Government staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the committee or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If a comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the committee concerning the item before action is taken. Uh, all items would be by a roll call vote. Anyone at, on the committee or in the audience have anything on the consent calendar you have questions about? All right, seeing none. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Roll call, madam. Suarez. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Wood. Yes. Pasquale. Yes. Wilkie. Yes. Power. Yes. Prout. Yes. Pryor. Yes. Yes. Wigman? Yes. Coach? Yes. Scrivener? Aye. Marquez? Yes. Thank you very much. Moving on to item five, active transportation program ATP funding recommendations. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Chairman Wood. Um, on October 28th, the California Transportation Commission released their list of uh, suggested active transportation projects. Um, Kern did very well. Uh, we were the number one uh, county in the state on a per capita basis for the active transportation program. Uh, we were allocated uh, $9.6 million, where our expected would have been about $2.5 million, so we did pretty well. Uh, in your staff report, there's five projects that have been offered for um, um, construction in, in Kern. And on the, we have also have a regional share, which we will um, determine at a later date. Um, I'll be glad to take questions if you have any. Thank you very much. Anyone have any questions concerning this? Seeing none, thank you very thank much, you. sir. Appreciate that. Uh, moving on to Caltrans reports, reports of projects. Projects. Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair. Mr. Marquez, sorry. <laughs> and and, uh, and uh, <coughs> board members here. Uh, I just have a, a, a few uh, projects to go over, um, uh, the status of it. The Lost Hills Lane Replacement on Interstate 5 between Lerdo Overcrossing and the I-5 uh, 46 separation 
Work completed includes the southbound continuous reinforced concrete pavement, uh, hot mixed asphalt, uh, shoulder backing, and traffic uh, delineation work. And uh, upcoming in the next uh, few weeks are removal of the northbound median detour and the northbound uh, traffic delineation, guardrails, shoulder backing, and rumble strip. Uh, the work uh, is approximately 90% uh, complete and uh, still on target for completion in January of, uh, of next year. Uh, the Bakersfield Bridge uh, preventive maintenance on uh, Route 204, uh, Golden State Avenue uh, between uh, 99 and 178. There's existing scour damage at various piers on the Kern River Bridge that, that's being addressed during construction. The work is uh, approximately 60% complete and anticipated to be completed uh, in March of, of uh, 2017. The Cherry Avenue truck climbing lanes uh, on Highway 119 near Taft from Elk Hills Road to Tubman Road. Work is scheduled uh, for the upcoming weeks include installation of drainage systems at the south side of uh, Highway 119, uh, complete installation of erosion control, striping and pavement markers, installation of rumble strips. Uh, this, the work is about 80% complete and anticipated to be completed by the end of December. Uh, the uh, current Larry uh, ins installing of traffic uh, monitoring stations uh, at various locations, um, all, all of the items should be completed uh, by the end of the week except for the PG&E service. Uh, completion of the uh, project is uh, uh, next month. Uh, the Buena Vista median barrier uh, from the Buena Vista Canal Road overcrossing to Route uh, 43 I-5 separation. This work has been completed and accepted. And then uh, the uh, on State Route 58 installation of a temporary K-rail and friction treatment in Bakersfield from Real Road to uh, the Route 99. Uh, 58 separation work is approximately 75 percent complete. Uh, the friction surface needs to be completed as well as striping. So uh, this, that's uh, what I have for uh, projects that are, are are ongoing at this time. Uh, be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Is there anyone? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate that. Moving on to the executive director report, uh, Mr. Hakimi. Good good evening, Madam Chair and board members. I have uh, several items on this agenda. Um, thank you all who attended the uh, Union Pacific Railroad uh, train luncheon. That was October 26th. I think it was very successful. We all learned quite a bit more about what it takes to run a railroad. I, I was shocked at how much they invest each year just in maintenance. The Taft Transit Center groundbreaking was held November 9th. Uh, Bob Snoddy and I attended. That was a great event, very well attended. Probably close to 40, maybe 50 people there. That was a, a great event for, for Taft and for the entire West Side. Um, a, f a couple of weeks before that, uh, Mr. Smith on our staff attended uh, the Taft Rails to Trail extension dedication. That was the same day as uh, our train luncheon. That was also very successful. There are active transportation workshops scheduled in just about every community uh, in Kern County. There's a list in your folders if you want to take uh, the time, and they will actually be walking your sidewalks and streets and trails and working on an ATP plan for the entire county and that all of our cities and the county can use when they apply for future ATP projects. Uh, the deadline for the federal fast lane grant that you may have heard about or your staff may have heard about is December 15th. We are at Kern County are able to assist your agencies and we are assisting Bakersfield with a reapplication. There are uh, webinars to assist you that are being put on by the federal government. If you're interested, there's one on November 22nd and another one on November 29th. Your staff or you are welcome to contact me for more information about those. Uh, and finally, on this ag agenda, on November 2nd, Kern Cog hosted a meeting uh, at the request of Supervisor Mike Maggard with Caltrans, Assemblymember Rudy Salas, and Kern High School District Trustee 
Flores and their staffs uh, regarding the accident you may have heard about on uh, State Route 184 near Foothill High School. Uh, subject to any questions, that concludes my report, Madam Chair. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to the current Council of Governments meeting. Uh, we don't need to redo a roll call. It seems to be good, and there are no additional folks, so we'll move into public comment. And what I'll say is speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name for address for the record prior to making any presentation. Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent calendar. Uh, the consent calendar item number F has been requested to be pulled by Mayor Kathy Prout. Um, but all items in the consent calendar, as again, are considered to be routine and non-controversial by the staff and will be approved by one motion. Uh, with this item being removed, um, you want to go ahead and yes. discuss that? Item F, actually, 2017 legislative platform. First Mr. Fitz. On, on the rest. Uh, any motion on the rest of the consent calendar? I'm I second. Okay, we've got a, you got him? Okay, roll call for those. Okay. Yes. Bob Smith? Yes. Wood? Yes. Pasquale? Yes. Wilkie? Yes. Bauer? Yes. Prout? Yes. Pryor? Yes. Bill Smith? Yes. Couch? Couch? Yes. <laughs> Scribner? Aye. Okay, thank you very much for that correction. I needed that. Uh, now moving to item F. Okay, it isn't really that um, involved, but because of the legislative platform that could affect all cities, our concern was how those conflicts, when it doesn't go along with the cities, would be identified and resolved. And I think Mr. Uh, Akimi will explain that to us. Sure. Uh, uh, thank you, Mayor Prout. Uh, and this goes for all the cities. Right. Whenever there is something that um, is controversial or something that um, I view that not all the cities would support, the, the COG has and will continue to uh, not take a position on items that, uh, that any, of any one individual city or, or more than one city um, would oppose or, or even items as an example, today there was an item that came up that I knew there would, uh, it would be unlikely that uh, many of our cities would support and my direction to staff was we will not take a position. Kay. So uh, does that answer your questions? Uh, yes, and I, th I think that's positive, right. Any other comments on this? Any other exp explanations? Yes, sir. Motion to approve item F. A second. All right. Roll call. Oh, vote vote for this. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to item four. Uh, nope, there's no item four, five, six, seven. Let's move on to executive director's report. Report on programs, projects, and progress. Just a few more items, Madam Chair and board members. Uh, December 8th is the E-TRIP quarterly meeting promoting ride sharing. The fiscal year 1415 audit letter is in your folders. <coughs> the community outreach, outreach festivals uh, finished with Red Ridgecrest last month. Kern, Co Kern Cog had a booth at community fi festivals in Tehachapi, Wasco, Delano, also at the Kern County Fair and Kernville. And this, this season, we spoke to over 2,000 people about mm. the transportation needs in all of our communities. December 2nd, and this is important, is the deadline for regional award entries. And I know that there are many deserving uh, people or groups or organizations out there. We will have an ad hoc meeting Thursday, December 15th here. Dinner will be provided, and we will need a group of three to maybe five volunteers. Any volunteers? Okay, we have uh, oh, we Mayor Wood, <laughs> Mayor Prout. Okay. Marshall? Wasn't it the 15th? This December 15th here 15th. in the Kern Cog office. Okay. 5.30 p.m. Okay, times 5.30. Okay. Okay, we'll, uh, just a reminder, we will be dark. There will be no board meeting. For, for those of you that volunteered, we will have the uh, 
committee meeting, but okay. it will not be a full board meeting. And, and we cannot have more than a quorum, obviously, for that, but we don't. Good. Um, yeah. uh, Mayor Wood, wha are you going to go over the election results, or would you like me to? I am. Okay, let me just go over what's in your folder tonight. Um, outreach efforts. Um, an information um, paper on public charging stations in Kern County. Timeline for the next five months. The walking audit locations and dates that I mentioned earlier. And open houses in addition to the walking audits. Uh, schedule of cash disbursements and the um, letter from the state controller I referenced earlier and um, if I forget have a great uh, Thanksgiving and uh, holiday season to everyone thank you madam chair thank you very much um, and before we move on to member statements I'd like to first say lastly due to the elections we want to say farewell and we'll miss you for your service uh, uh, to Arvin, uh, uh, Mayor Jose Flores, uh, Bakersfield alternate Harold Hansen, Shafter alternate Fran Flores, and Ridgecrest alternate Jim Sanders. And to all of those that have won their elections, um, I apologize by a show of hands. <laughs> there we go. We're back. Just these two. Huh? Thank you very much. Pardon me? Yeah, just these two. One, two, three. Um, thank you very much for your service, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and we wish you the best, absolutely best. You've made some great contributions to the COG during your service here. And welcome for some more. Thank you. Um, another thing before we go to member statements, well, this is member statements on their own initiative. Council members may make a brief announcement or a brief report on their own activities. In addition, council members may ask a question of staff or the public for clarification of any matter Provide a reference to staff or other uh, resources for factual information or request staff to report back to the council at a later meeting concerning any matter. Uh, furthermore, the council or any other mem any member thereof may take action to direct staff to place a matter on the bus on a business on a future agenda. I'd like to start with, um, I'd like to also wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. And we know that since we're going to be dark in December, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and all the other happy holidays, to include, uh, include a wonderful Happy New Year to everyone. So anyone else have any comments? Anyone? Uh, uh, <laughs> ditto. Uh, this, this, this Saturday, uh, the Cavs are going to have a Chamber of Commerce. It's going to have a fishing derby at Buena Vista Lake, uh, Lake Webb. And uh, it's all been stocked with trout, and uh, the grand prize, the heaviest fish, is a thousand dollars. Then we have like different categories from youth, you know, under age uh, ten, and different age groups with prizes, and uh, a lot of money to be out there. You know, good opportunity to everybody's guaranteed in those categories to win. There's not going to be any exclusion or anything, but uh, it's a good opportunity, and uh, it's always fun because it's a family affair. You bring your kids out there and have a great time. I think kids are like, uh, I think it's $15, adults like $20. And that includes the gate fee and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, bring a little picnic and have a great time. And uh, the weather's going to be nice. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rachel. Anyone else? I do have a comment, if I yes, may. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, well, you know, I want to thank every one of you for, um, you know, for allowing me to be here, for instance. And it's been a, an honor and a privilege, you know, to work with you and to chat with you, to, you know, be in conferences and to share knowledge and experiences and also to be, you know, the Arvin Mayor. It has been a wonderful ride, you know, because since I started in 2002, when the city of Arvin was in extremely turmoil under the Olivares time, and I've been the only survivor since then. So I can tell you still many people, you know, remember the, those days. And uh, I can tell you when I ran for council, I was clueless about, you know, uh, community service. But I want to share with you that one of my family members that I got into an accident. Uh, well, you know, my youngest baby was run over and, um, and the police uh, officer did I a horrible um, 
you know, police report regarding my son. And uh, that's what it got me into, you know, to run for, for counsel and to make a difference. And I, I want to share with all of you that I used to hate Arvin with all my heart and the police department for all the bad experiences that I, I lived there. And I want to share with you also that I lived in Arvin for 15 years and I didn't know that we had government in there. You know, I didn't, because, you know, the police department used to run everything. So I had no clue about, you know, what was really going on, is that we had a city hall or anything. And, and again, you know, I'm not blaming uh, other city. I would say it's just, it was me as a citizen, I was not getting involved on anything. Just, you know, my family and, and working all the time. So, but when that took place and I find out, you know, what really was taking place, that's what it got me into in there. And even though, you know, when, while I was running for a council, I, we were looking for a house in Bakersfield, <laughs> you know, so we, I was not even really, you know, uh, I didn't care if I win or not, so because we were planning to move to Bakersfield, you know, but God had a plan for me and I prevailed 17 votes over the other candidate that he was in planning commission for 17 years and I was the new guy. So it was an amazing experience. And, and obviously, you know, uh, prior to that, I attended the council meetings for six months to be able to see what, what, what is really what's going on. And, um, you know, and I can tell you, as much as I hated the police department, and I, I wanna know why the police department were so, you know, bad with the community. And I was a sawman back then, and I was making more an hour than a police officer in Arvin. And it didn't make sense to me. You know, because a police officer, they put their life on the line. And, uh, and what I did, I recommend the you know, staff to look into, you know, what the other cities pay their officers. And, uh, you know, we did the work, and we gave a 37.5% increase to the officers. And I pushed that, you know, because I believe that we, it was the right thing to do for our police department. And many, many obstacles that, and you know, hurdles that we ran into the city back in the day. You know, for instance, we found $3 million in Puerto Rico that it belonged to the city that it, they were not active for, for over a year. That's, the, that's why we found out that, you know, Arvin had an account in Puerto Rico. <laughs> so, wow. you know, it had so many, you know, you know, unbelievable things that uh, happened in Arvin back in the day, and we were able to work with that and to get Arvin, you know, moving forward. Uh, you know, when I was elected and look into the operational budget, it was $1.5 million back then. Today we have $35 million, and uh, the community has been growing. And, you know, and I'm proud of everything that we have done and being able to work together with, with every one of them and community members. I learned to listen to people and, uh, you know, and, and to work with them and to get ideas from them. I can tell that I learned from a three-year-old kid, you know, to an elderly. So we learn things from, you will at least expect, you know, that uh, this uh, sometimes questions, they get you thinking. And that thinking, you, that's how you learn, you know, to uh, figure it out and pretty much look and answer for yourself and to improve as a person. And, um, and I want to share this with you because um, you know, I, I want you to know why I ran for council. And, uh, and I knew that it was not going to be easy this time for me to be reelected. But I can tell you, 14 years being there, it is a good time. It is a good time that you know, for the community, uh, as a person for me and my family, and uh, I think it is you know, also this time to, you know, to get back with my family and take care of them. And uh, I still have a lot of things to do with my job, training and all these things, but I am blessed and God bless you all. And uh, uh, Kathy, you know, I mentioned to you, I remember when I first ran into them in a conference in Sacramento, it was, you know, beautiful couple and I wish you the best.
Thank you all. Mayor Flores, you've done very much for your community and with your dedication, and we want to wish you the absolute best. And I want to give you a applaud for your service. So thank you. Thank you. It's been wonderful working with you. Okay. Um, anyone else have any comments? Okay, seeing none, uh, I'll move for a motion to adjourn. We will be dark in December, and our next meeting will be January 17th, 2016. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Merry you want to stay? Yeah. Merry Christmas, Aye. happy holidays, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>